Hello, my name's Philippa Waller. My name is Penelope Waller, and we are two of the directors at 4D Human Being. And welcome to the 4D Human Being podcast. What's it all about, Pen? It's all about your personal and professional relationships. It's about your communication skills, how you lead, how you work and build teams, how you are looking after yourself and your well-being, and how you are much more at choice. What do we mean by that? Well, sometimes we can get a little caught in patterns in life and we can all be a little bit on our automatic pilot. So 40 Human Being is all about helping us get back to choice and being a four-dimensional human being. And your fourth dimension, of course, is intention. So whether it's about your impact, your leadership style, your team dynamics, whether it's about your well-being, whether it's about your communication or your presentation skills, Anything that involves human beings interacting with other human beings, 40 Human Being are here to help. We're going to take a deep dive and look at some tools, insights, theories that are going to help you go from a 3D human doing to a 4D human being so that you can happen to the world rather than the world simply happening to you. We got a little. Oh, we got a little metronome. Oh no, I can't stop that. Okay, there we go. That got me. Oh, you're getting back to the old tango, Phil. Oh, I've been tango. I know. Again. I feel quite jealous actually because you know it's a combination of physical exercise and slight kind of kick ass. Well, I think, I think I found my tango <laughs> attitude because. It, I was never in doubt about your tango. No, tango <laughs> because the thing about the thing about the tango is it's sort of an anomaly in a way. Although I suppose you could say the quick step is an anomaly. But you know, you've got foxtrot waltz, Viennese waltz, tango, quick step, and quick step. So quick step is a little bit of an anomaly. Yeah, no, tango shouldn't be in there. But exactly, tango is the, the bridge to the Latin. It's so sure. Yeah, so tango is really different. And I've met people over the years who. When they say you know they do dance and they say they do tango and they just do tango. Yeah. That's a thing. So I've been doing all these other dances, a little bit of tango, but not really. And it's such a different feel. Yeah. And it's lower, it's flatter, it's straight, it's got these sharp, quick head it's turns. Suits you. And it's, it's well, I sort of a bit like don't mess. It pen. That was my realization. It was like, ah, this is the dance where you say, not on my watch. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You can have yeah. a you can have a go. Yeah. But and I can be with the feathers floating around, but actually once yeah. it's underneath is yeah. there's a line. But here. when I decide to turn, you're gonna know about it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, I thought that might be your dance. Oh, I love so it. So you've brought the tango attitude into this conversation, which is very different yes. to the attitude perhaps that you had um in the experience that's gonna form the basis of yes. this campaign. Absolutely. So we're gonna talk about the silence silence <laughs> I know interesting different yeah different choice so going on a silent retreat for 10 days for 10 days before we do though yes can I I want to I want to take this opportunity as I always do and I want to talk about a couple of things that came up for me which I'm sure we'll find super segues so one is that in the UK we had an election yes now we are definitely not getting into politics no here, but so. it, it wasn't insignificant it in wasn't insignificant results. so no. so you know what but what what fascinated me about it was afterwards and the response and my response and and and, and I don't really I don't mean politically because I totally get when you voted for you know one thing and that doesn't happen like yeah. I totally get that you're not going to be like oh great yeah yeah. But what what fascinated me about it was it brought up a more general sort of series of responses that we might have to anything. Yeah. Anything new, change, anything possible, someone giving you an idea, oh, I've got this idea that yeah. might I think will be really good. They're really excited about yeah. it and you hear it and you go, mm, "What can I find that's wrong with yeah. that?" Yeah. <laughs> so exactly. So then I thought, "Okay, that's interesting because I saw on social media all these different responses and I knew what I could feel what mine was." Again, regardless of, you know, we don't know what's coming. We don't know how many of the commitments will actually yeah, be on. how effective like, they're going to be. Don't, we, know, we don't know. But I thought what's interesting is just, just for us to notice when somebody offers an idea or when a potential change is happening or you get a piece of news or anything at all, and it's not necessarily what you want or expected or it's the unknown or uncertain. I think that's going to be one of the links into what we're going to talk about yeah. today is to notice what is the default 
yes. reaction because we talk at 4D all the time about choice and intention. And that is not the same as the default pattern that maybe is how totally. to say. 100%. But it might not be. It, but there are other options. Well, totally. And, and the thing that struck me the most was exactly that, which is... We talk a lot about change at 40 Human Being and how it can be unnerving, we can be, you know, concerned, we're trying to find certainty and control, etc., etc. And yet, the nation voted for change. Yeah. And yet we're often trying to avoid change. Yeah. So there, there is this juxtaposition Absolutely. in the human being that we want it... And yet we try to avoid We're it. We're terrified it's a, of it. It's a slight madness. Yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely true. So just notice, again, t- trying to... I know it's difficult, but parking politics, what your response was... And, you know, flip it if in your head if you want. You know, allow it to be a few years ago and the yeah. other party won, let's totally. say. Totally. Because I think for us that's the more interesting thing than the politics, actually. Yes, exactly. It's the human response. It's the response, either way. And what I noticed was, I sort of categorised it into, I don't know if it's three or four, let's kind of, I'm going to sort of riffing it. But at one end you've got, oh, I don't know, but yeah, <laughs> I'm on board. Where can I buy the T-shirt, you know, and, and, and read the manifesto, which was totally my response. Like, you know, read the manifesto. Right? Oh, curious. What, curious. Like, what are they saying? What are they saying they're going to do? Who are these people? I'm learning the names of all the cabinet, you know. And I'm like, okay, well, this is... Let's see. Yeah, like, what can I learn? Yeah. What can I understand? And, yeah. and actually, is there anything I can do here? Yeah. Like, is there anything I can contribute? Is there anything that I... If I've, I've got any ideas about how to reduce mental health waiting lists for psychotherapists in the NHS... I mean, you know, and I'm sure I'm not the only one who thinks like that, but that's one response yes. at one end, right? All that energy of possibility. not Still not knowing. And then you've got the sort of fence sitting. Hmm... Well, let's wait and see. Yes. And it's fairly neutral and it's fair enough. Like, let's wait and see. But it doesn't have the energy that we would talk about of like, okay, well... Great, what's, what's, what's possible? What's possible? Can, yeah. I, can I add in my energy yeah. into this? But it's like, I'll wait and see. Yeah. Quite pragmatic. And then you've got this, like, then you've got the cynicism, the sort of eye rolly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see what they can do. Yeah, I've seen it before. So, well, well, yeah, it was not going to happen. I, you know, and that's, I mean, whether that's very British or not, I certainly recognise it, don't you? Yeah, yeah, come on. We've been around this block a few times. And there's that response. Again, none of these are indefensible. No, you no, know, you can see. All them. very useful. Yeah, so you can, you know. And then the last one is just the outright attack. Yeah. Which is, you know, I've sort of plenty on social media of, right, well, you've got it coming to you now. What's, I'll tell you what's yeah. going to come down the track. This is going to be disastrous, et cetera, et cetera. And this, this is the spectrum of uh, every team. <laughs> you can even really, work exactly <laughs> and that's what really struck me about it and it was partly when I when I read social media and I saw such definite definite negativity like there's no way anything good is going to come out so I thought well, this is really interesting because yeah. actually we don't none of us know that no but it is about our default responses yeah. to things for whatever reason and there's no totally. judgment on that but it's just really interesting and it's to hu- notice totally and it's human nature outside of politics it's human nature in our personal lives in our work lives and you know one of the things I found really interesting about lots of the debates that went on post the election because it was a for those of you who don't know, I'm sure everybody knows it was a huge landslide here in the UK. And it, it, the Although some people might argue about how well, that landslide yes, happened. But, yes. but the government switched to, to, yes. to a new party. And lots of the conversations that came up one or two days after were about how the ex-government, now opposition, have such a fundamental role to play yeah. in opposition. And actually... If yeah. you don't have that, regardless of your politics, yeah. so you need those dissenting voices. Yeah. You absolutely yeah. do. Yeah, it's true. Absolutely. So you need all of it. Yeah. So, and it's just noticing, is it a choice? Can you flex on it? Can you move from one to the other? Can you say, well, here, I'm going to, you know, I'm sort of interested or I'm going to give my energy. Yeah. Over here, I'm going to say, hang on. Yeah. You or know, do you have your fixed kind of response? Yeah, do you have fixed oh, that, Well, that's me. That's who yeah, I am. Yeah, exactly. That's who I am. And yeah. I, this is what I believe. And that got me to also thinking about conversations that I'm either having or hearing about a lot and this is definitely a thread that we've talked about for a while which is around big change tough times and and our last campaign was around navigating through tough times and I don't none of that's gone away I think you know that's continuing to come down the track the pace of change is just speeding up so quickly and I think a lot of people are facing both personally and professionally massive changes and I think this is also relevant for that yeah that how do we respond and do we polarize into you know insane optimism or 
into its yeah. you know, sort of devastation? Or actually, are we able to move up and down yeah. that scale and catch ourselves when we've decided it's all hopeless and you know nothing good is ever yeah. going to happen again? Can we catch that? The polarizations aren't always useful. They're not always useful. And I think it's either got to be amazing and all fixed, or exactly. You know, and I think what's really interesting about the, this next campaign that we're that we're doing that we'll, we'll explain in a moment is. It really is pulling it back to the self. So yeah. regardless of change of government, tough times in your organisation. Yeah, massive global change, you know. Huge. What the, what the topic is for our next campaign and the way that it's come about and the perspective that you particularly have taken on this, there is absolutely no choice in, in what we're going to look at and the way we're going to look at it, but to pull it back to the self. And that's not to say that in many situations... Yes, we can make changes ourselves and, and yes, we can ask the system to change. But in this particular campaign, yeah. it's pulling it back to there is no other choice That's but right. to change something here. And your state individually, as much as the world is happening, and we talk about this all the time, don't we? Is the world happening to you or are you happening to the world? That whatever is happening in the world, and sometimes we just don't know what's happening. You know, terrible things yeah. are happening over there, but we've just we've just baked a really nice cake so we're happy like sometimes it's because we just don't know yeah there are always things going on but sometimes there are things going on whether it's in an organization or our personal life but then maybe we've won an award for something that we do or maybe we've just excelled at a hobby or maybe we've fallen in love or someone's just asked us to marry and them and the state changes and the state changes yeah. and all of that you know it's sort of overwhelming life is terrible and everything's very difficult doesn't feel like yeah. that so the state that you're totally. in totally and it's absolutely not to underestimate the impact that our state has on how we respond to the world around us and the reason that we're, we're doing this campaign the focus that we've got on this campaign is because Phil you spent 10 days in a silent retreat when well yeah it's, it's, I'm so curious to hear more about it and, and what's so interesting about that I think not, not that I experienced it but what's so interesting about that is that of course you don't have much information coming in you do really have the state that you're in and how you're responding to what's around you with very little communication. And that's the reality that you then start creating. And whilst, of course, in the real world that most of us live in most of the time, we do have a lot of communication, there are so many similarities in terms of the self yeah. is still kind yeah. of choosing albeit subconsciously, what state we're going to be in, what we're going to think about things and how we're going to respond to things. And I think a silent retreat must be like a really concentrated version of that that must throw up so many insights and reflections. Yeah, yeah, I think that's absolutely spot on. A quick word from us at 4D Human Being. If you're enjoying the show, please do click follow so that you can have the 4D Human Being podcast instantly in your feed. And we'd love it if you liked and reviewed us. Let us know what you think. Please do think of one or two people that you could share the 4D Human Being podcast with. Somebody who would really benefit from the content you're listening to right now. Back to the show. So, so this next campaign is five leadership lessons. And actually, it's five leadership and relationship lessons from a 10-day silent retreat. Sounds like quite a lot when I say it now, yeah. 10 days. It was a lot for me. Yeah, I know. Well, I wasn't there. We were without <laughs> each other for 10 days. And it was absolutely that, that, exactly right. I think that comparison of being thrown into a very different context, not really knowing not really having much information you have a routine but you don't have much information and you're really left with your own yeah thoughts yeah and your own processes and actually time to reflect on them which arguably in in life generally we tend to respond to things around us but we don't tend to then think oh i'm just going to think about how yeah. i responded today to xyz and what that meant and what i might have been feeling or why i might have responded like that whereas of course yeah. if you have that tie where you're not communicating with others and you're just self-reflecting yeah that's what you're going to end up doing right we live in a culture now certainly in the west a lot we're very distracted yeah. it's very easy to be distracted we're busy and if we're not busy we can binge on netflix you know like we don't have to be with our own no. thoughts but of course our own thoughts and 
you know, internal processes are really what's driving the show. Totally. And we can sort of put our fingers in our ears and, and try and ignore them, yeah. but they are driving the bus. And sort of say, well, no, that's because somebody else said that yeah, or someone or else bl- said that. Yeah, exactly. And, or blame someone else. Or, I, yeah. Again, we'll always say that there's a truth in the fact that the system impacts us and we impact the system. And I think what's so fascinating about what you've done is that you have no choice but to pull it back to you the self. You've got to pull it back to the self, exactly, because, you you know, you can't say, oh, well, it's because so-and-so said... So, because no one's saying anything. <laughs> you know, it's... <laughs> You know, there's nothing to, you, you know. Well, I, I think they were thinking. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, like, well, now you're in the f- realms of fantasy. <laughs> exactly. And that's exactly right. That you're, that you are, what's so interesting is you're still in relationship and you're still in a community. What is reflected back to yourself is your own processes and yeah. your own assumptions. Which I think is so true of our lives. Yeah, of we, course. But, but we, well, don't, we, but we, we don't believe it or accept well, it. Well, we justify them. Yeah. We post justify yeah, them totally, but of course you can't because you've got no you've got no material to no. grab and say well that's why yeah although you can try you can try you really try hard. you can try really hard <laughs> because of the way they moved or looked at you <laughs> well they took the last piece of pie yeah oh, look at them having seconds before everyone's I mean honestly honestly it's just it's so fascinating so here are you don't even have to go on a side <laughs> retreat to get these tips but you can if you want to I highly recommend it. It was an incredible experience. So five leadership and relationship lessons from a 10-day silent retreat. And this is what, for me, really distilled down. And there's plenty one could take, of course, but here are five lessons. Number one, impact. You're always making an impact. Yeah, even when you're not talking. Even when you're not talking. (laughs) Number two, assumptions. Oh, Oh, that was a big... My toppity top favourite. It was such a big one. And I feel like, you know... I, I wonder how if we talk about that enough, actually, assumptions, oh. because they they are playing out. They're running their, the show. They're, <laughs> running show. they're playing out their little soap opera all the time, aren't they? And running the show and working so hard to bend your thinking that to, they are the truth. Yeah, they're like a little courtroom yeah. that are proving their case yeah. all the time, yeah, yeah. looking for evidence. Yeah. So assumptions, which is so interesting, when when you're not in verbal communication. But you're you're looking at what somebody looks like or moves like or whether they look at you or don't look at you. And I mean, I couldn't have been more wrong yeah. about, you know, some of the people there. Number three, ego. And what was interesting about ego was partly the Vipassana. It was called Vipassana meditation. So for a little bit more on that, you might want to check out our um, article on our website because I'm, I just explained a little bit more about the actual practice. The Vipassana anyway is is about ego yeah. because that's very much in that sort of buddhist tradition of working through your ego so it was re- embedded in the practice anyway and then you've got the added bit of the ego of how good you are at meditating i mean the ego is so sneaky that even as you're sitting trying to practice something to reduce your ego up pops the ego yeah, and, and it's telling you something else. telling you because your ego wants you to be the yeah. best meditator i mean it's so sneaky yeah, yeah and then it starts going oh this is a waste of time you should why don't you just leave it's yeah. it's like do you remember the cartoon mr ben in the 70s yeah. where he'd go into a, so there's this cartoon in the 70s in the uk where this little character would go into a the clo- changing room the changing room in a clothes shop and he'd put on a costume from around the world and then he'd go on this adventure yeah. so he was always in this new costume and the ego's a bit like that like it shows up and you don't even recognize no. it as your ego because it feels so it feels so reasonable. Yeah. You're like, actually, why am I here? And I think what's really interesting about that, and we'll we'll get into that on the on the next episode. Yeah. I think what's really interesting about that is it's there all the time, popping, popping, yeah. popping. And yet I imagine when you're on a silent retreat, you suddenly have this space to see it. Yeah. Whereas usually we don't think it's the ego. We think absolutely. it's reality, fair, rational, yeah. other person, whatever whatever we might yeah, think. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Whereas actually it really it strips out everything because the ego is like it's like where's Wally he just like he just he, the, the ego can disguise itself yeah, yeah, and just yeah. get hidden in the chaos yeah, yeah. whereas when you strip it all out you're like there you are oh, again there yeah are. there again what made me smile was of course wanting to be the best manager I mean yeah, I, you sure. know it's so it's there, on yeah. its head yeah you're like the very reason to be yeah. here anyway so hilarious so number three was ego and number four was intention. Yes. And again, part of the Buddhist and Vipassana teaching was it, nothing starts with communication and action. Everything comes yep. from intention. I, and and that's I why like, we love our model at 4 And that's the 4D model. C. Absolutely. So that you can paste on all the behaviours you like. It's got to come from... I mean, we're very behavioural. We're very tools-based. Yeah. 
and, and it absolutely has to come from intention. You can again, you can pop you can a clothes, kid yourself. you can kid yourself, but they'll feel it. Yeah, they will feel totally. it. And we, uh, as we always say, you have an intention. It's just often it will be unconscious, but you're still walking in with yeah. an intention, and people will feel it. Yeah. And I think one of the reasons that came up for me on the retreat was when it got tough. One of the teachers, in the few moments that you can talk, you can go and have a private conversation with one of the teachers there, like occasionally, like as an hour a day, you can do that. And when I was struggling, oh. bing. Uh, when I was when I was struggling at one point, told me to put my bin out, Phil. Well, it's good, it's good that you've got you know you've got, that's what I think reminders are actually useful for to take that stuff out of your head. You know, well, you say that it's every Tuesday. It's every Tuesday. It doesn't change. It doesn't change. Um, yes, the uh, the the other part around intention was also that when I was struggling, that the teacher would say. And you've set the intention to be here. And I'm not saying yeah. the intention, it, the impact counts. And, you know, we want results and all of those things, I know. But not to forget that when you've set an intention yeah. to do something, to stay with it. Yeah. That, that's no small thing. No. And you know it'll be perfect first time, but the intention well, I, I is d- there. I'd also take it, yeah, take it back a step further than that and be proud of yourself that you've set an intention. That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Like, it's it's yeah. not nothing. It's no. something. It's a choice. Absolutely. And it's, it's good. It's big. Yeah, it's big. And then the fifth one was story. And we do talk about story a lot and we had it in a different way in the last campaign around vision of the future. But really, it was such a reminder of how messages and how behavioural changes and new choices really really stick and it was the stories that were told in the kind of seminar sections at the end of each day that really made the learnings concrete and it's just a reminder if you're not using story in your communication you are really missing a trick stuff yeah Yeah. and it it also made me think of when you came back for me you were full of stories even though lots of them would have been internal you did also have some conversations with people um towards the end but you, you had so many stories. You didn't come back and say, well, we sat for That's 10 right. hours a day and then we did That's this. Right. And then we, That's like, right. The stories are the things that you are, more, I would say, probably more naturally processing internally yeah. through experience. Yeah. And I think we can get a bit caught on data and That's sort of right. chronological diarising Absolutely. things. Whereas for you, yeah. 10 days in silent retreat, stories the stories that you remember absolutely so impact assumptions ego intention and story and today we're going to talk a little bit about number one impact and i mean really in a nutshell on the catwalk of leadership you are always on display yeah i mean that's it isn't it in a nutshell and don't and sort of really really don't forget well (laughs) and and also if we think about how you're creating an impact on the catwalk of leadership and the catwalk of life, personal relationships in your in your work environment. I think we can very often neglect the impact of the physical. And yet I can imagine on a silent retreat, that's pretty much 90%, if not more, of the information that you've got from other people. And yet everybody's making an impact. Absolutely. So that's what's going on. Absolutely. So a really good example is if I go to the silent retreat. So we turn up, we have a meal where we can talk and then silence falls. And then we, you know, you go to your room and and, uh, you've sort of got your shared bathrooms. So you're you're finding your way. (laughs) You're like nudging people out of the way. Well, well, actually, what was interesting (laughs) is what you, is you start to notice patterns. So... That's interesting. Yeah, so things like somebody putting their things, their shower things, in because there were two showers in my block, and you've only got certain breaks in the day where you can shower because you're not supposed to shower during meditation time in case anybody's meditating in their room, which sometimes you can do that rather than the big hall. So then you might notice that someone's put their things to reserve the shower. Okay. Now, what what's interesting about that in terms of impact is... If you were the person doing that, so you could equate this to a leadership decision to behave in a certain way or do a certain thing, you might have a very, very good reason for doing that. Yeah. But if nobody knows that... They'll take what they can they'll see. They'll take what they can see. Yeah. And actually, you know... Yeah. That's, so, for, for, so in that example, it might be that... They might not be wet. They or were they... wet when they arrived, the bottles. They didn't want to put them on the dresser in their room. They put them in the... I mean, who knows what the it, reason was. But you, yeah. you will interpret that to mean, 
think they've reserved that shower. Yeah, they've reserved that shower. They they're not thinking of anyone else, and they're not t- playing fair. Yeah. Like they're not queuing up. But maybe, maybe they maybe they felt really ill. Maybe they weren't able to get a shower the day before, and they really are feeling like I've just got you know, like you've got no you idea. Know. You don't know. Yeah. But there's an impact. But there's an impact. Yeah. Exactly, and that's when you know that you start filling that space, of course. And even if you you know you might try and be your most generous self, but if you're standing there waiting and there's no one in there, but so, like you know, yeah, we're all human. And, and I know that I know that obviously on the silent retreat you were not speaking nevertheless in our usual environments whether that's at home or at work the percentage of your impact that is actually happening through your physical choices and what you do and your behaviors is absolutely enormous and you might think that the language that you use the communication that you use verbally will be really clear or certainly counteract any behaviors you have and I'm I'm afraid, no. Our our animal brains, our reptilian brains are processing data first and they will be looking at behaviours and things that people are doing. Well, and you and I talk about this all the time, don't we? If we think about, let's give one example. So let's think it's a company kind of town hall conference and you've got a few speakers. Let's say you're a leader there and you're about to go on stage and maybe join some colleagues, let's say, and you're gonna do a 10 minute slot. Beforehand, you're sitting at the front row, you've got all your notes, you're going through them, sort of a little bit edgy. People can see you maybe. People, people can feel you, yeah. see you. And then when you walk on stage, you just think, right, I, I was told to go and sit in that chair. So you just, you just walk onto the stage and you hit that chair. Now, we would say, you've already made the impact. Yeah. Which side of the stage did you decide to come into? Not where, not where were you told to come in, but which, because one of those, what, you know, if you come in as from the audience, if you come in from the audience's left, much stronger. Like, yeah. we know we know stuff like this. Yeah. How uh, did you choose to stand? How did you, where choose, did to stand? you choose to stand? Who did you make eye contact yeah. with as you moved in? Once you're sat down. What's your posture? What's your posture? <laughs> the eye contact that you're making, you are already signalling yeah. to the audience you're, you're, where you are in the pecking order totally. of the status. Bang, 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 bang. And it's done. It's done. It's all done. And now... You hope that your 10 minute rehearse slot kind of gets you back to maybe where you want to get to. But you've either given yourself a really good platform to start from. And from there, you can just roll that out. Or you've given yourself an uphill climb. Yeah. But that's already happened. Totally. And I I really hope that the bottles in the shower cubicle are a really good (laughs) sticky image to think about that really basic initial impact of the choices that you make whether that's in terms of how you're behaving physically or things that you're doing in the space things that you put in the space yeah huge huge yeah. impact yeah that you are exactly that if you're sitting there rifling through your notes or pacing around at the back walking onto the stage without really thinking or not making eye contact or greeting or hosting all of those things you have just put your yeah. stuff in the shower and left the bathroom and everyone's yeah. now making assumptions and it's, about And you. it's not to say good or bad either way. Like, maybe you want to appear very vulnerable. You Maybe you want to appear like I'm, I'm with you guys. I understand all of us find it difficult public, to do public speaking. Like, there's no right or wrong yeah, around good this. Point. You are, nevertheless, yeah. making an impact with the choices that yeah. you make, even when you're not talking. Exactly as you say. It's not right or wrong. It's, is it choiceful? Yeah. And when you've... You know, when you walk into the office, let's take a kind of rank down, a couple of ranks down. If you're, and I've worked with somebody who really changed the game from what I'm going to describe, which was the sort of worker bee. He he was always rushing around, always had lots of, you know, data and folders in his hands, quite quick with conversations as he walked. You know, he had a seniority. Yeah. He was a manager at the time. But he would, so he would talk to people in the, in the open plan office, but it was kind of quick. Half his body was already turned I'm away. Busy, yeah. I'm busy. I've got to keep... And we looked at it and went, you are going to get stuck here, yeah. not because of your capability, but because of how you're yeah. perceived. Yeah. And just by slowing down, 100%. giving the time, moving on, having the conversation, people were like, this guy's in charge yeah. of his time. And that, and he was that, promoted to a massive, massive role. That is the power of our physical impact. And for any of us who think, well, it shouldn't be like that, people should listen to what I say, I, I absolutely hear you. <laughs> and I have to say, if I was on a 10-day silent retreat, which is probably unlikely but it, you never know I might do it one day but if I was on a 10 day silent retreat boy I'd be looking at everybody else yeah. I mean oh, it's fascinating it's fascinating, fascinating right yeah it's fascinating and of course of course you can be totally wrong and that will take us on to um, the next episode which will be around assumptions you can be totally wrong 
the problem with that though is that you're not going to get a chance with everybody no. to explain yourself or to fill that gap in. No, and, and, and our brains are designed to work on assumptions, which we'll talk about in, in the next in the next yes, session. But so, they're also designed to make very, very yes, quick, decisions quick decisions for our own safety. Totally about your impact. Yeah. So the thing that for me is is most important about this, and I had a conversation with a coaching client today, is we can get very caught in the intellectual as human beings, very caught in the content. What am I saying? What do I need to say? How do and I... only putting our focus on ourselves when it's our turn to when talk. When it's our turn to talk, exactly. And how, how can I summarise what I do and, you yeah. know, et cetera, et cetera. How can I look impressive? Whatever, whatever it is. And I'm not saying that that's not important. I think the silent retreat is such a beautiful example of, yes, even though it's silent, it is still a wonderful representation of really the data that our brains are processing to assess the impact that somebody else is having on us and what we think of them I mean it, ju it just is absolutely exactly because so if you imagine in that space where you don't have verbal communication what you become super super aware of is how people move yeah. down corridors how people open doors for you and signal to you whether to go first or not how people m create clarity around communication and living in community how people because we weren't even you weren't even allowed to make eye contact right. and certainly anyway there were people there who came with a friend or something for example you can imagine if you were you know just giving the wink to a yeah, mate yeah, suddenly yeah. you've got it's a whole sub yeah. kind of culture going on so so but nevertheless even without eye contact you were, were effectively communicating with people all the time all the time all the time so i think that's the thing is we think about communication as ver as verbal a lot of the time all oh, you know communications because it's about what we say and but of course we were we were working together and finding a way of being together and sort of creating a set of rules almost. And almost relationships. Absolutely yeah. relationships. And there were people, in fact, at the end, there were two, I didn't even know, there were two particular females that I had thought throughout, I, I must speak to them. Just because one of them was sat next. Just because of how they were behaving. Just because of their the way they looked or how they how they were moving in this. I can't even describe, maybe I, you know, one had a pair of shoes on, that I can't even remember, but there was something about them both. And at the end, when I finally joined other people to talk, it's another story, because I was a bit reluctant yeah, yeah, to yeah. go like, Oh, it's and, nice in this side. Yeah, it's nice in this side. <laughs> but I went out and they were together and they were chatting away. And I, I finally, I went up to them and I said, I said, it's so weird you're together. I said, because you were two of the people I thought I've absolutely got to talk to at the end of this retreat you just really impacted literally impacted me and they went oh that's so funny we're friends we came together we've known no. each other since we yeah they were iris they were an absolute crack and they and they knew each and i hadn't seen them together ah. i'd seen them totally separately and they'd had this energy this impact on me and so there we were we were having this whole conversation we were laughing so much about it they were like oh, that's so funny that you wanted to talk to us you know <laughs> and they were an absolute hoot but something about the way yeah. they held themselves well that is this is another really good point uh, within the physical impact that we're making and i would never made eye contact with them yeah Within the, within the physical impact that we're making on each other, the energy yeah. that we can feel from each yeah. other without talking. Absolutely. It's extraordinary. I mean, we are we are emotive beings Absolutely. as human beings. We can feel energy. And Absolutely. and in terms of how you interpret that comment, we can feel energy. You know, some people will, will sense that in terms of, yeah, we have an un, a non-verbal communication. Some people will interpret that to mean, you know, a whole other level of kind of deep, connection as human beings that we can really feel each other's energy but we definitely definitely can well let me say the weirdest thing then <laughs> so so when i finally left the meditation hall and as i say a little bit reluctantly had to be slightly nudged out by one of the assistants because <laughs> it's, like, it's like it's like switching channels yeah it? it was like switching modes and went outside and i sort of noodled about a bit so sort of walked about a bit and then i saw this group of three women all i could see from very different backgrounds and i walked and, I, and it felt welcoming and but I, there was no words yet. It's so it is, no, that, I'd never spoken to even them. Even that is interesting. Yeah, so I, hadn't, I mean, I could see they were talking, but I could feel. I think there's a. I think there's a space. Like yeah, it feels like I can. I, feel could, I can feel I'm, I. Yeah. I would be welcomed there. Get this. I walk up. Walk up to them and I start chatting. I mean, I'm still in contact with one of them. I start chatting to them, and one of them must have said, "Oh, you know, how did you find it?" And one of the things I must have said was, "Well." I said it's been really it's been really interesting I said and actually one of the things that I really realize is that what an impact it was to be away from my identical twin for 10 days three other women and one by one they all said you're not a twin are you I'm a twin and, the no! other, and then the other two went you got you're both twins I'm a twin and all four of us 
were twins. That's so weird. I know. Three three of us were identical twins and the other one wasn't was a non identical twin, but all four of us had twin sisters. Oh my goodness. That's Isn't that so the weird. weirdest yeah. thing? So weird. And, and they were all f- standing together. And there's like two two hundred people there and that's the that's the group I went up to. And we were all like oh. and it, there's so, no there's no way we cannot sense other people's energy yeah. like it's that is that is remarkable yeah it was so weird anyway so yeah. impact 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 even impact. when you're not talking i do you know yeah. I, I really love this film and, I, and i'm so glad you went on this retreat because i feel like <laughs> I, you didn't have to. well i thought i didn't have to but i feel like i've learned so much from it yeah. from you yeah and lots of the things that we talk about regularly like I know they're true because all of our work is science based, research based, and yet it's so interesting to hear yeah. a first hand experience yeah. Yeah. of all of the points that we, you're going to make through this campaign. And the impact piece is just absolutely yeah. beautiful. And, I, and I'm going to I'm going to use the silent retreat in some of my work because for some of us it can be really really challenging to accept and believe that the impact we make is not necessarily through what we know and what we say. And it's just so important. Yeah. And those big moments, yes, they're important. The presentation, the the meeting that you chair, the the big piece of news you've got to reveal, the interview, all of that is important. But sitting in the waiting room and the way you talk to the receptionist, walking through the corridor, the way you walk into the foyer and greet the security guy or or woman, the the, the, exactly walking down the corridor and rushing past somebody because you're in a hurry or taking a moment to make this is who you're becoming. This is who you in every moment you practice who you become, and it's almost like if you get those bits right, the other bits won't follow, will just follow. You know, it's like we you, you miss those bits and. I think I told a story a while ago about breaking my car breaking down on Waterloo Bridge Road, and this, I mean it's one of the most awful places to break down. It's an incredibly busy spot. You really don't want to be blocking traffic on the roundabout on Waterloo Bridge Road. And this woman was sort of really angry with me, and was sort of huffing and puffing as my car was finally literally chain lifted onto the back of a truck, lifted off the road because it had totally gone down lifted onto the back of a truck and she was really irritated and I thought it's so interesting because she may well be driving on her way to do some really good charitable act but she's also the the impact of her yeah. isn't just the good thing she's going to yeah. do when she gets home to her family or does her good yeah. act it's in this moment yeah. where somebody who couldn't do anything about this and probably felt quite stressed and vulnerable and probably got stressed and vulnerable yeah. you know and I thought we are who we are yeah. we're making an impact in every single moment and those bits in between I think about it like the sort of the cement in the bricks or the glue yeah. they're, they're, they're not, not a sideshow no. they're not irrelevant they are, they are you they are you yeah. and they are they're, and they are how people talk about you as well and they are how people talk about yeah. you so those irritable moments when somebody hasn't got the folder that you need yeah. the information you need for the meeting is as much you as the polished final version of that message yeah yeah in in the meeting so and it's not easy like we're all human so i just want to cap that with you know sainthood is totally. hard like we we're you know we're totally. allowed to be and, human totally and, and we can't all go on a, a 10 day silent retreat for, for many many reasons which is why i'm so so delighted with the reflections and the lessons that you've you've brought out of that and i and i think they've been so useful just not just in terms of your own experience but you, because of who you are and what you do you've really reflected on the 4d work and what you've noticed and and uh, the impact of that 10 day silent retreat so brilliant that we're sharing it even if we can't all do it i feel like i did it and i feel like i've learned the lesson yeah right. definitely <laughs> let's leave one tip yeah if we can leave one tip to think about how you're showing up your behavior your eye contact and your attention to other people, yeah. not in the meetings, not at the conference. In the in-between bits. In the in-betweens. Yeah, yeah. totally, 100%. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the 40 Human Being podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Do take on board some of the insights, tools and tips because every time that you try something new to get back to choice, you are making a vote for the you that you want to become. And I I love that phrase, Pen. I do too. And please do share this episode with somebody that you know would really benefit from the lessons and learnings we've been chatting about today. 
And of course, if you're interested in more from 40 Human Being, do get in touch. We run workshops, trainings, online, in-person, conference events and keynotes. We've got the 40 On Demand platform for your whole organisation. And we do have a free Essentials membership where anybody can sign up for absolutely free to access some of our insights, tools and tips. So do get in touch with us if you'd like to hear more. We cannot wait to hear from you and to carry on the conversation.